everyone. Welcome to Book Break for June 10th. Um, I am Kirstra. I am a librarian here at the Greece Public Library. I moderate the Pints and Prose book discussion group, as well as the virtual science fiction and fantasy book discussion group. And as usual, I am joined by Claire. Hi, I'm Claire, and I do the historical fiction book group on Facebook, and also as the page turns, and do some teen book ordering. So we've got some great books for you this time. Yes, we've got some books that I'm excited about. Um, do you want to start, Claire, or do you want me to start? Sure, I can start. Okay. Um, in light of recent events, I decided to educate myself, and I read Just Mercy. I could not get my hands on the adult version, so this is the young adult version by Brian Stevenson, um, who was an attorney from Harvard and started the Equal Justice Initiative. Hmm. Um, he was undecided about his path and knew he wanted to do something with social justice. And he took a one month intensive course on race and poverty litigation and spent a month in Georgia uh, on a mission to defend condemned people on death row. Hmm. So his life was forever changed from that experience. He knew where his direction was supposed to be. Um, but he had some really interesting facts that really gives you pause, that one in every 15 people in our country are expected to go to jail. Hmm. Uh, one in three black male babies will be going to jail. Um, and a quarter of a million kids will be put in adult prisons. Um, just a lot of really sobering facts. Mm -hmm. I could go on. Um, but one of the most interesting cases was a man named Walter McMillan. And I had not heard of the case before, um, but he was in Alabama. He was convicted on a murder charge on false testimony and police perjury. Um, he spent his pretrial 15 months on death row, which is kind of unheard of to be, mm. have your holding cell be on death row. Mm -hmm. um, he had, he was on death row for six years. He had four appeals, um, all denied, and um, until Bryant took his case and went through all the channels and eventually got his conviction overturned. But just seeing the struggle, kind of seeing how the judicial system works, it was really eye-opening for me, and I'd really recommend it to anyone hmm. that... Um, unfortunately, it reads almost like a thriller, which it shouldn't. <laughs> But um, it was a very, very interesting book. Um, even with the young adult version, I, I was thoroughly engrossed and read it within like a day and a half. Wow. So. Yeah, that, so I have been listening to a lot of like true crime um, podcasts and some of them will get into like the questions of innocence or like they work with various innocence projects. And it seems like that might be, um, this Just Mercy might be a good choice for folks who have sort of that interest in, yeah, um, you know, crime and criminal justice. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to put that one on my list, I think. Yeah. Nice. Um, well, maybe I'll talk about my nonfiction next then. Um, so mine is Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. Um, the subtitle is Lies, Spies, and a Conspiracy to Protect Predators. Um, I actually listened to this one on audio, um, narrated by the author, um, who has a very nice um, voice for narrating. So that was, that was cool. Um, but it's, it's really fascinating. Um, so the main portion of the book takes up um, the Harvey Weinstein case. And Ronan Farrell was one of the first journalists to really break that story um, in the mainstream media. Um, and he does talk to about, so there were the journalists at, I wanna say the New York Times, um, Megan Cantor and um, Tui is her last name. And they have a book that they wrote also um, coming at it from sort of a slightly different angle. Um, and I'm going to forget the name of their book. We have it in the collection. 
Um, I'm, I'll come up with it at some point. <laughs> um, but so it's, there's a lot of sort of behind the scenes of journalism involved, which was fascinating to me, um, like why some stories get on the air, why some don't. Um, so the, the title, Catch and Kill, actually refers to um, a, a cover-up tactic whereby you get um, a media outlet, like a newspaper, in this case, they were talking a lot about the National Enquirer, um, who's sympathetic to you, and you get them to um, pay someone for the rights to their story, and then they just never publish the story. So that's the catch and the kill. So they catch the story and then they kill it. And essentially that prevents the person from taking their story to another media outlet because they've already given the rights to that story to someone else. Um, so a big chunk of the book has to do with the Harvey Weinstein case. Um, he also takes on, um, he talks about Matt Lauer, he talks about Jeremy Epstein. Um, there is some, um, some about Trump in there. Um, during the lead up to the 2016 election. Um, so it's just really, really interesting. Um, and I'd say you learn more about just how power works than anything else, like power and money, because that's mm -hmm. the one thing all of these people have in common, right? Um, yeah. And just sort of how they can influence the process um, from lots of different angles to get the outcome that they want. And you really learn why, like Harvey Weinstein in particular, was able to operate, I and mean, it was an open secret in Hollywood for decades that he was a predator. <laughs> and um, you really kind of see how he was able to continue um, and what it took to actually break that story. So I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I highly recommend to anyone who's interested in journalism, interested in learning more about like the Me Too movement, um, any of that, um, Catch and Kill will be a good book for you to read or to listen to. Yeah, that um, what you were saying about the power and money mm -hmm. reminded me of a quote. Capital punishment means them without the capital get the punishment. Yeah. And that was one of the things his mentor told him when he first went to Georgia and mm -hmm. started to meet some of these folks. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. And like when he was gathering sources for the story, um, there were so many people that, um, that he talked to who were just terrified, just terrified to go on the record. And it seems sort of at the beginning, like what is, like kind of what is the big deal? Like, why is this such a huge deal? And then you see the lengths that some of these folks went to, um, like seriously, some spy stuff in there for real, oh, wow. like um, bugging people's phones and hacking their emails and all kinds of stuff. Like it's, it's real, <laughs> it's legit. Yeah. Um, so, and you really get a sense for how brave a lot of the, the victims really were for giving their stories. Um, so, yeah. Well, my second book is also kind of a, a courtroom drama, but it's mm. a lot more. It's called Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. And um, this book starts out, um, it's, it's really a story of immigration you have a Korean family that comes to America. They have one daughter and really they want a better life for her. That's why they came. Um, but they start out and they have this unique medical facility in Miracle Creek, Virginia. And it's a, called Miracle Submarine. And what it is is a pressurized oxygen chamber. Like um, a hyperbaric tank? Yes. And you have yeah. people that they claim that it can help people with anything from autism to infertility. Hmm. So you have a scope of people that are using this miracle submarine um, <laughs> to try to help their kids themselves. And uh, one night, um, unfortunately, a fire occurs, two people die and four people are critically injured. Um, 
So then what happens is you're trying to go back and a young mother is put on trial for the murder of her son. It was mm -hmm. an autistic boy in the submarine. Um, and at first you think the case is cut dry, you know, you have your witnesses, but as the book goes on, you start to realize, well, maybe things are not what they seem. And you start mm -hmm. to learn about the lives of all the different people that, um, that went into the submarine, like the families and how they were related, and also about um, more about the family that owned it and mm -hmm. then their own relationship with their daughter. Um, and it was, it's just, you know, the daughter actually resented being here because hmm. her mother, um, the father said the mother and her early and the mother ended up being working for a family who provided them um, housing and also schooling for the daughter, but she had to work in their convenience store and she worked from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight were her daily hours. So the, the little girl, you know, young, young girl never saw her mother. So for her, this new life in America, even though they had more things, meant a, you know, a dissolving of her family life and her relationship. So um, it's just so many different things that would make a great book group discussion because you have the family issues, you have immigration, you have the competition amongst the mothers and like um, this autism group, um, the hypocrisy of some of these relationships, the lies people tell. Um, so yeah, it was really, really a good book. And I'd say it was a great book for a book club choice. And Angie Kim, the author, actually had a child that she used this treatment hmm. for. So that even made it more interesting when I read that yeah. in like an author interview with her in mm -hmm. uh, a publication. And I believe this is a debut novel. So, which I always kind of gravitate towards those. Nice. Well, it's funny you should say it's a good discussion book because that's one of our Pints and Prose books for the fall. Um, I might have to come to that meeting because yeah, I want to talk to some people about this book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how I felt. And it, it seems like, does it have kind of the same feeling to you as like a Little Fires Everywhere? Yes, kind okay. of. Because yeah. that's sort of the, the feel that I got from reading the summary and listening. It to definitely you know, builds in momentum very much like that book did as okay. well. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, I'm excited about that one. Yeah. That'll be good. Um, so my second book is actually one that we read for the virtual science fiction and fantasy book discussion group. It was our second book. Um, and the title is An Unkindness of Ghosts by Rivers Solomon. Um, it's available on Hoopla as an ebook, um, we all read it on Hoopla. Um, and it's, it's, I loved this book. Um, it's science fiction. Um, it takes place on essentially a colony ship. Um, so this whole, thousands and thousands of people are on this ship. They have fled the earth because it is no longer habitable. Um, so they are, you know, out in the cosmos somewhere searching for a new home, right? Um, so, what the author has done though is she has taken and she said very explicitly that this is was her plan she's taken the plantation system from the american south and transposed it onto this colony ship so you have society striated in very much the same way as plantation society um, again very much based on skin color um, so the, uh, the white folks are your upper class and they live actually on the higher decks of the ship. And then as you travel down, you have the, the black and brown folks, um, who live in the lower decks. Um, and our protagonist in the book, uh, her name is Aster. She's in her early twenties. Um, and she is, um, a bit of a genius. She, um, studies biology and medicine. She actually works with the ship's surgeon um, and assists him and then also takes sort of her doctoring skills to the lower deck folks who don't have access to traditional medicine. Um, but she's also, you never, the book never comes out and says it, but in all of her sort of 
um, actions and ticks and the way her brain processes, um, she's coded as autistic. So she is somewhere on the spectrum. And it was fascinating to me um, to have that first person narration from someone who is um, neurodivergent. Um, it wasn't, it's not something that I read a lot. I, maybe there are more books out there um, from that perspective that I just haven't read yet. Um, and that's certainly possible. Um, but I really enjoyed sort of that different um, framework mm -hmm. for how she processes everything that she sees. Um, and we also get, um, so she's the main point of view for the book. Um, we also get uh, point of view chapters from a few of the other characters who are important to the story. Um, and there's also, so there's sort of a central mystery to the book, um, which is that the, um, the leader of this colony ship has suddenly become ill and there's something wrong with the ship. And it seems like these two things are linked somehow. And um, Aster is sort of on the hunt to figure out what's going on and to try and fix the ship and more or less save everyone. Um, although if you probably asked her if she was really interested in saving everyone, uh, she might not say yes. <laughs> yeah. And you sort of understand why, um, given her interactions with folks on the rest of the ship. Um, so it's, if you've read um, Kindred by Octavia mm -hmm. Butler, um, this might be a good sort of companion piece to that um, because it is sort of looking at the same institutions, but with a slightly different, slightly different eye, slightly different perspective. Um, but I really enjoyed the writing and the characters, um, and I, I just tore through this book. Um, so it's un An Unkindness of Ghosts. I highly recommend. Yeah, I really liked Kindred, so I mm -hmm. should try that one. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's science fiction, like they're on a spaceship, but it's not like pew pew lasers science fiction. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're on a ship and there are some things that are different, but it's not like aliens and lasers and things. So right. it's, it, it, for folks who are like, I don't really read science fiction, this is a good science fiction to read. Um, well, my last one was on Hoopla as well and uh, read it for a teen book club. Mm -hmm. um, it was called Three Dark Crowns by Kendare mm -hmm. Blake. And we actually own it here. It's checked out or I would have shown you the cover. Mm -hmm. um, but it was really, it was all the things that people love about YA, but it mm -hmm. kind of really hooked me in because you have a fantasy, of course, and um, you have a love triangle, of course, um, and you have some really interesting female characters. Um, the, the story goes is every generation on the Isle of Fenburn, a set of triplets is born, each with a particular magical power. Um, so the, this group of triplets is Mirabella, who's an elemental, so she can control storms and fires. Catherine, who is a poisoner, she can consume all kinds of poisons to no ill effect. And Arsinoe, who is a naturalist, so she's supposed to be able to make different plants grow, mm -hmm. um, have an affinity with animals, and usually the naturalist will have an animal companion. Um, that kind of helps them in their journey. Um, so each of these sisters is going to have to fight to be queen and all bets are off the year they turn 16. It's called the Ascension year and they fight to the death. So you have these three girls um, all with their each different gifts who are supposedly going to have a showdown. And uh, so it's different people in the towns and there's also like councils. Um, there's of course a ruling, like a goddess temple. Um, everybody has a political intrigue or aspiration mm -hmm. as to which girl they want to win and why and what's in it for them. So you kind of have backstories weaving in as to different supporters who are trying to plot, um, you know, because originally it looks like 
uh, Mirabella, who has the storms and everything, has been very powerful. Her gift has been strong since childhood, where the other two are really struggling. Uh, so you have people trying to kind of go over them. But it was really interesting. I read it really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, one of the teens in my teen advisory board read it, loved it. She's on to like, of course, there's more, you know. <laughs> This one, it's not a trilogy. I, it's four books, I believe. Okay. But um, uh, So yeah, it was really good. If you want something different, kind of light and, mm -hmm. you know, totally, totally different, uh, I recommend Three Dark Crowns. Nice. And it's available on Hoopla, so. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so my last book um, is fantasy also of a different type. So this is Follow Me to Ground um, by Sue Rainsford. Um, it's a tiny little book. Um, it is super weird, but I kind of loved it. Um, so the main character, Ada, um, she lives with her father um, sort of on the edge of the woods. Um, we don't know where they could be really in like any country or almost any time like it, it's got a very sort of fairy tale quality um, mm -hmm. to it. it well it really is sort of a fairy tale like a modern fairy tale um but Ada and her father we don't know exactly what we are what they are but we know from the very beginning that they are not human okay um they look human but they are not and they refer to um, the humans around them, to the people as cures, because they are healers. So people from all around the town will come and make an appointment with them and to be cured of various ailments and illnesses. Um, and we see some of those cures happening and it's um, like you don't, really understand why it works like there's definitely some kind of magic or something at play um but it's all very uh um uncanny like the okay. way this whole process works um but the the action such as it is um starts when ada sort of forms this attachment um you might almost say obsession for one of their cures and she starts um, a relationship with him and then you know things kind of unfold from there um it's like i said it the, it's so weird <laughs> this book it's so weird like part of the the curing process sometimes is putting people to ground so there's a patch of ground behind their house and they will put people to sleep and bury them in this oh. patch of ground and a certain amount of time later once the ground has done its thing which we get the sense is vaguely sentient or powerful in some way they'll go and dig the person up and wake them up and they'll be cured um so like it's very very strange I don't want to underplay that at all it's <laughs> totally weird but it's it's like a modern fairy tale but from the perspective of the monster really like of the unnatural person and that's Ada and her father um so I'm not going to spoil any more about what happens um and I also, I, I almost think the plot is like less important than just the, the quality of the book. Like I've been okay. reading these books that I keep calling atmospheric, <laughs> right? Um, but this is totally atmospheric. It's totally different than like anything I've ever read. Um, but I loved it. It's short. I just devoured it. It took me a little while to figure out like what is kind of happening here how does this all work but once I got in the groove of it I was like oh this is this is really kind of good and I just devoured it yeah um so depending on your tolerance for the odd and uncanny um if that kind of thing is your jam 
um, check out Follow Me to Ground and then talk to me about it because I feel like I need to talk to people about this book. Like, it's so weird, but I, I loved know. it. And I want All right, to maybe I'll it. read that one. You read this one. There you go. And we'll talk about them together. Yeah. Yes, we can have a whole separate book break where it's just the two of us talking about these two books. That's right. <laughs> book club of two. Uh, yeah, there is something about book club and discussing mm -hmm. books. There really is. Absolutely. And every so often you get one and you're like, I just like, I have opinions and I need to share them or I need someone to tell me what was going on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So some good, some good talking books. So please everyone, if you read any of these books, right. um, That's come what find us and talk to us about it. <laughs> like we need, we need to talk to people. <laughs> yeah. We need to talk to people about books. Exactly. Um, all right. Well, thank you, Claire, so much. Um, we will be back, I believe, in two weeks. Um, and I think we're going to have another guest with us at that oh, point. Oh, exciting. So I know. Very exciting. So we will be back with you in a couple of weeks with some brand new books. And enjoy. And we'll see you then. Take care. Bye.